Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in this channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting point. We're going to go into this sort of uh, debate. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this is this probably going to be the, one of those videos where the comment section is going to be a little bit interesting. So let's get to it. Today we're going to be talking about Maya versus Blender. Which is better? Which one should you learn? Which one should you use? Which one should we support? Like, what kind of softwares are we going for? This debate has been going on for a relatively long time, about a, probably a couple of years. And um, it's very interesting. Now, I will say something. I am completely, completely biased towards Maya. But I'm going to be showing you why Blender is also a really, really good option. The reason I'm saying I'm biased towards Maya is because I've been using Maya for 10 years. Ever since I started, I actually started with Cinema 4D, but I sh uh, jumped straight into Maya shortly after that. I've been using Maya for almost 10 years. So I know Maya almost inside and out. And, and I've been using the tools for so long that it, it is a little bit difficult for me to jump into another software and be as fast as I can be inside of it, right? Inside of Blender, for instance. But that does not mean the Blender is bad. Actually, I'm going to talk about why Blender is really, really good. So... Uh, Blender and Maya are both uh, 3D packages that uh, show us or, or, or allow us to create productions, right? We can model, we can texture, we can render, we can animate, we can rig, we can do simulation, we can do hair, and uh, there's some very, very cool things. So I'm going to be talking about some of the pros about H1, and then I'm going to give my, my professional opinion and my opinion as a, as a teacher as well. In regards to Maya. Maya has a very, very long-standing history in the industry. So more often than not, you will find the big studios, like what we talked about in the couple, uh, last couple of videos, in the big studios, they will be looking for people that know either Maya or 3D Studio Max, which are like the big ones, right? So from that perspective, you definitely should learn Maya because if you want to work at Disney, if you want to work at Pixar, DreamWorks, or on any of the big studios, that's the software that they're going to be expecting you to use because that's the one that they use. And not only do they use the stock version, uh, I've had like several teachers show us that they, they take the stock version and then modify, like heavily modify the version, adding their own plugins and their own support and their own like uh, coding and stuff. And they create this sort of like Frankenstein Maya that works really, really well for the pipeline. So it will be pretty much impossible to ask a studio to get rid of Maya and relearn and reapply all of the tools that they've developed so far for Blender. So when people ask me, hey, do you think Blender is going to take over the 3D world? I always say no, it's, it's definitely not. The same way no one's going to beat Photoshop, or at least not soon enough. Um, it, it's just a software that's been used so much by so many studios and people that it, it's not easy. There will be more competition and the user base will be divided a little bit more, but that does not mean that the software is going to disappear. It's not like uh, like uh, Alias, right? Some of you might not remember about this one. I, I didn't use it, but our teachers uh, used to talk about this one. There was this one uh, called Alias 3D, which was a modeling software that Autodesk bought. And then I think Maya was born from this. Like they, they used this as a sort of... Uh, uh, launching uh, platform to to build Maya and, and create everything that they have right now. So, so Maya is not gonna go anywhere. But again, this, that does not mean that Blender is uh, it's just gonna sit in the shadows, right? So Blender, I learned about Blender probably like seven years ago. I, I had a, a friend of mine that that used to work on on a studio that I used to work at. And, the, and he was a very, very, like, super intense Blender user. He would be like, Blender is the best, Maya sucks, I hate everyone who uses Maya. And I'm like, whoa, dude, chill. But he was right. Like, Blender was really good. And he was really fast using Blender. He was able to deliver the same amount of things and the same amount of, uh, the same amount of quality that we did. And, uh, and he did great things. So what's the one thing, like, the one thing that everyone loves about Blender? It's free. It's completely free. Any one of you can go in here, download Blender. It's relatively uh, light. It's open source, fully featured. It's it's really good. Okay, so Blender is really, really, really good. My advice in regards to Blender, like if, if you were to ask me, well, what should I learn? Should I go Blender? Should I go Maya? Both of them are 3D softwares, right? Like both of them will teach you the basics of, of, of the 3D world. However, none of them will teach you the things that you need to know as an artist. They won't teach you proportions. They won't teach you composition. They won't teach you balance. They won't teach you timing. They have the tools so that you can use all of those concepts and apply them on your, on your uh, work, but they won't teach you that. So uh, remember the, in the last video, or not the last video, but in the video where we talked about the, um, 
my, my history and how I learned and stuff like that. There's like the soft skills. It was a how to get a job, right, in the industry. So there's the hard skills and there's the soft skills. So you can learn the hard skills, modeling, extrude, babble, insert, edge loop, in Maya or in Blender. It's the same. It's the same hard skill. You're just going to be able to jump from one to the other. But no one's going to teach you how to properly analyze, how to properly tell a story with textures, how to how to add emotion to your characters throughout animation. Like all of those things you're going to have to learn somewhere else and then apply them using whatever tool you you're, you want to use. Right. So so it's important that you understand that that this at the end of the day is either Blender or Maya. They're both tools and, and tools are really good. However, they, they need a good uh, user to, to get the most out of them, right? So, so you are the user that needs to be really well prepared in all the soft skills to utilize the hard tools or the hard skills from the softwares in the best possible way. So when people tell me, I want to use Blender or, I, or I'm inclined to use Blender because it's free, the first thing I ask them is, well, yeah, but can't, can't you really afford Maya? Because right now Maya has something that some of you might not be aware of called Maya for Indie. And Maya Indie is the answer that Maya has for indie users like myself that are not like millionaires. I would love to have like as much money as uh, you could have in this world, but uh, we're, we're just users. And uh, in indie users, we, we don't have uh, the money that a studio might have because of course we're just one person. So all of the countries that you see right here, uh, probably yours is here. I know a lot of our fans are from India. So uh, India, United States, a lot of the Americas, Mexico is here, for instance. We all have access to this uh, Maya Indie. There's only three uh, requisites, I think. They, your net profits should not exceed $50,000, which is a lot of money. If I was making uh, $50,000 a year, I uh, would be more than happy to pay the full version for Maya, but uh, I'm not there yet. We'll talk about money in, a, in an upcoming video, by the way. I know some of you uh, are curious about uh, how much uh, money does a 3D artist make, right? Uh, you can't use this on projects that are above $100,000. So if, for instance, Pixar calls you and says, hey, could you help us do a model of a trash can that we need on this particular scene or of a barrel that we need somewhere on this like Western barn? That project is probably going to be a project that's above 100 USD. So that means that you're not allowed to use the Maya Indie license for that specific project. And finally, you can only have one for user or organization. So in this case, just myself. If you fulfill those requisites, you can go and buy your own license. And as you can see, it's actually really, really cheap. I thought it was going to be super expensive, but it's really cheap. It's only, in my case, since I'm in Mexico, 300, 3,000, sorry, 3,716 uh, pesos, which should be about uh, no, 307,016 divided by 20. It's about 185 bucks. If you divide that by 12 months, you're just paying $15 a month. It's nothing, guys. $15 a month, it's what you and me spend or spend on, on a game every weekend, right? When we're doing buying DLC and stuff. So $15 for a full, complete license of Maya with all the available tools, with Arnold Renderer, Mesh, Bifrost, um, like every single tool that you can imagine inside of Maya is there. It's really, really cheap. So this is the license that I use. This is the one that I have, and it has worked great for me. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but here's the cool thing. Blender, being it a, a free and open source program, means that if you download Blender and you have problems, yes, you can go to the support page, but unless it's something like super, super big, they don't owe you anything, right? Uh, I know that the community is really supportive and they always try to help you, but if you find something that you would like to change and it's something that it's not really important for them, they're just going to continue with their normal like development process and that's it. For all of this, you are a client, you're a paying customer. So, so you do have a little bit of more leverage there where you can actually ask them to help you on some specific things. I personally have never used that sort of thing, but I know of people uh, inside of my artistic circle that have actually contacted others and made them like fix simple things in like code or in tools that were not working properly or working in the way they, they were intended to work. And, and again, since you're a paying customer, you have a little bit of that leverage. That also means that all of the studios and all of the customers that are doing this um, are supporting the business and the more money uh, Autodesk has, technically, the more support they should uh, give to the software. 
Not always, it doesn't always happen, but it's something that we, we hope it, uh, happens, right? That's the other thing about Blender. Blender being open source means that um, there's a lot of people that can collaborate on this, right? And, and sometimes I know that sometimes there's been like delays and things like that. A studio, like big, a big studio like Disney or DreamWorks again, they they couldn't work with this. It, it's it would be very difficult for them to work with this sort of like um, uh, workflow because if they're if they're dependent on on the on the software doing something and it breaks, they need that to be fixed as soon as possible. Disney in this case, if something breaks in Maya, they can make others change it within the week because they're paying millions of dollars probably for all of the licenses that they use and they need to make sure that everything works the way they need it to be, right? So. So that, that's one of the things, right? As long as it's free, yes, there will be advantages. You're not paying anything, but again, support could be in here or there depending on how difficult your, your problem is. And in regards to Maya, you know that there's a big enterprise that, that needs to fulfill the, the requirements of the, of the population that's using its software. So that's one of those. Um, other than that, I think that one of the very cool things about a Blender is the Blender Foundation that I've been hearing about more and more as time goes by. And the Blender Foundation is this sort of organization where big studios are donating and they're supporting the development of Blender. Now, why is this? Why do people need Blender to be good? Or why do people want Blender to be good? If I have a studio like mine right here, five people right here, and I could get all my artists to change their indie licenses to uh, Blender licenses and, and become very well prepared to work in Blender, then I would save myself quite a bit of money. However, that transition is definitely a little bit uh, time consuming, right? I, I can't make the jump. Like if I wanted to learn Blender to the way I know Maya right now, it would probably take me about a year to really like fully master Blender. And when you're in the middle of a, of a job uh, delivering a commercial or assets for a game, you, you don't have that much time to do so. So that's, that's one of my uh, opinions about this. Like if you're already really good at Maya, and you have no need to jump into Blender because you can afford a Maya license, then consider just sticking with Maya and, and learning Blender on the side little by little until you get proficient with it. But you're probably gonna be very, very good at Maya all the time, right? So so that's it. We're gonna jump into conclusions in just a, a short uh, second. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, uh, about these two things, which is something that uh, a lot of people seem to discuss, and, and I will give the point here to Blender, is Blender has way more things for the whole production pipeline. So they have 2D, they have uh, a good VFX, a video editing, which is really, really cool, and even like color correcting and stuff like that. So if you're a small studio or you're just one person and you want to dominate or, or know everything about the process, then Blender might be your, uh, your option. However, if you're a specialist, you wanna become really, really good at something, modeling, animation, rendering, and stuff like that, then Maya might be your better option because Maya has a little bit of more of a robust tool. For instance, I know that sculpting inside of Blender is possible, and I've seen some very cool sculpts uh, out of this, but they don't beat ZBrush. Like, if you're gonna become a sculptor, and you learn ZBrush, there's no need for you to learn uh, sculpting in, in Blender. You're gonna be able to import anything, er, everything anyway. So, so you should always try to go for the tool that has the best options for you and the tool that is gonna open more doors, okay? That's, that's uh, another point. So let's go for the points. I always like to make lists, so let's go for the points. I'm not gonna say one is better than the other one, don't worry. Don't crucify me, please. So don't worry. I'm not gonna say go Maya, go Blender. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna enumerate the points that I see um, are important here. So, what are the things that you should consider before you choose either Maya or Blender? Industry standard. It's important. We need to consider it. Do you intend to work in the industry? Do you want to work for a studio or in a big production house? In that case, you're probably going to go for Maya or any other like software that's used uh, as an industry standard because Blender again. It's not there yet. Price. Price is something that you need to consider. Do you want to pay a little bit for Maya every month? Well, you need to pay it upfront, but it's pretty much divided through the, through the year. It's, it's a lot uh, easier to manage. So do you want to pay for Maya every single month or, or a, a yearly license, or do you want to go Blender completely free? It's another consideration you need to have. Do you want to be, um, uh, let's call this a, a generalist or a specialist? Okay, like which one of those do you want to be? 
And uh, finally, how important is support for you? Okay, because some people really rely on support and documentation and stuff like that. And some softwares will have more about or more things uh, regarding support than others. So with these four points into consideration, you need to make the choice of which one works better for you. And again, don't, rem don't, don't forget this. You need to learn soft skills. You need to learn about light, about composition, about anatomy, about proportions, about uh, design, all of those things you're not going to learn in Maya or in Blender. Blenders and Maya are going to be the tools for you to create things using that information that you're going to learn somewhere else. So with these five points in mind, you tell me, guys, which one do you think is better? Which one should we learn? Which one should we practice? Maya or Blender? That's it, guys. I'll see you back on the next one.